Some of you might remember the days of AOL in the 1990s. You'd sign in, hear a bunch of noisy modem sounds, and magically, there's the internet. Well, sort of. You could check your email, click some weird buttons that took you to things like the news, weather, or shopping, and type in keywords to get to websites. But as more internet service providers came online, the way people accessed the internet changed. Connecting to the internet and browsing the internet were no longer the same thing. Today, you might get your internet access from a cable or phone company, but then you browse the web, which is a subset of the internet, using a web browser like Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Microsoft Edge. Companies typically make free web browsers because they have financial interest in how you use their operating systems and their internet-connected products. By offering web browsers, they're able to gently sculpt your computing habits and make their other money-making products more attractive. But what is a web browser exactly? I'll give you a longer answer in a second, but the short answer is it's the thing you use to browse the web and look at web pages. I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's actually important to think about because, like I said earlier, your internet access and a web browser aren't the same thing. That's because you can use an internet connection for more than just looking at websites. You can make video calls, play online games, stream movies, and update software. All of these activities still need internet access, but they don't necessarily need a web browser. I'll say it one more time because it's so important. The words internet and web are not interchangeable. They're related, but they're two different things. So then, the real question here is, how does a web browser allow you to look at websites? You can look at memes on Reddit, follow your friends on Twitter, and watch cat videos on YouTube. This is possible because there are standards and protocols that are just that, standard. That means they're the same across every website, which is what allows your web browser to view so many different types of content, because really, they're all written in the same languages. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Instead, let me illustrate what a browser does by explaining what happens when you visit a website. At the top of every major web browser, there's an address bar where you can type in the site you want to visit. Let's say you want to watch a YouTube video, so you type in youtube.com and hit enter, and the website appears. But when you hit the enter button, a chain reaction of events takes place in a matter of seconds, sometimes in less than a second. So much stuff, it's kind of amazing it works at all. First, the web browser has to find the location of a server where the website you want is stored. Generally speaking, a domain like youtube.com represents an IP address. You can sort of think of this like typing in an address into your GPS before traveling somewhere. The browser then uses a worldwide database called the Domain Name System, or DNS, to match the domain name you typed in to the corresponding IP address. The browser will check its cache of addresses first and a few other places before it queries the DNS, which helps speed up the request. Next, your computer, called the client and the server where the website is stored, establish a connection with one another over the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP. The client sends a request to the server asking if it's open for new connections, and if the server has open ports that can accept connections, it will acknowledge the request, and then finally, the client sends one more message acknowledging it received the server's acknowledgement. Now that the connection is established, the client can request web pages over HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Your web browser sends an HTTP request to the server asking for the website. And I should note here, this is a simplified example where we're pretending that a website is stored in a single place on one server. In reality, a major website like YouTube has huge buildings all over the world called data centers that are filled with servers. 
So when YouTube receives your request to its IP address, lots of internal routing occurs. And it's not just one computer serving all of YouTube. But in the case of a small personal website that doesn't get much traffic, it may indeed just be one server. After the client has sent an HTTP request and the server has received it, the server will analyze the request, dig into databases and storage drives to access the information you want, and then build a response, usually in the form of HTML or hypertext markup language. HTML is the basic building blocks of every website. Sometimes those responses can be in other languages like JSON and XML, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll stick to HTML for this example. The server software might be written in Ruby, JavaScript, Python, PHP, ASP.NET, or several other languages. But in most cases, they're all trying to achieve the same result. They're taking an HTML template, filling in some blanks with data from a database, and then sending all of that to you, the client. In the case of YouTube, this might be things like a video page, the video itself, comments on that video, other recommended videos and their thumbnails, and so forth. After the page is built, it's sent back to the client. These two steps are usually what takes the longest. The server takes time to process the information and build the page, and then it takes time for your browser to download the information to your computer. But the browser's job still isn't done. Now, all these files are downloaded on your computer. It might be HTML, JavaScript, cascading style sheets or CSS, along with other media like videos and images. When you look at these things in a browser, you see a visual rendered web page, but the server isn't sending back that visual result. Sending back interactive visuals like that would take way too long to download. Instead, these small text files like HTML and CSS are fast to download and then interpreted by the browser to build the web page that you see on your screen. The browser starts with HTML, drops in things like images and videos, and then using the CSS, it builds the layout of the information and adds styling like fonts and colors. Browsers have become so fast at doing this, you don't even notice it's happening most of the time. It's just a quick flash and a few adjustments in a matter of milliseconds, and suddenly the page is there, ready for your enjoyment. Browsers do other things like keep your information secure, and check sites for viruses. It also remembers the sites you visited and keeps a copy of them in a data cache. So the next time you request those same websites, they load up faster because there's less data to download and update the cached version. To learn more about how technology works and build a website of your own, check out Treehouse. I'm Nick Pettit, one of the teachers there, and it's an online school where you can go from beginner to job ready faster than you might think. We have hundreds of courses and videos, and we even offer guidance so you know what you should be learning next. Thanks for watching.